It's that time again, Our Town Live, where friends, family, people you know, and others you'd rather not know share with us their unique bits of wisdom. And now, here's Herb, your host, for another show. Our guest today is Stacy Chalimi, author of A Woman in Control, and now A Woman Who Still Has Epilepsy. She had a moment of clarity when she was in college. She knew she developed epilepsy when she was five, and they think it was from encephalitis. In those years, epilepsy was so hush-hush that by the time she got to college, she wanted more information. When she checked college libraries, they had maybe five books with information, and all of it was written by and for doctors. She adds, it was very over my head. She wanted something that the average person could understand. In the process of getting information, she discovered her story helped others with the affliction. She wanted something that the average person could understand. She needed information. In the process, she discovered her story helped with others with the affliction. She began writing books at the end of the 1990s, by which point she had married and determined to live a full and normal life and had become pregnant. Chalemi has since written five books, including her debut book, Epilepsy, You're Not Alone, An Epileptic's View on How to Cope with the Disorder, and another one prompted by raising her own children, My Mommy Has Epilepsy. She does not drive because of her epilepsy, and she has had seizures in front of her children. That, she says, moved her to record her own experiences in book form. All kinds of people have epilepsy, and it's not something you develop only when you're young or because you're poor or any of the actual cliches, she says, but it's something that you have to believe you can live with so you can pursue a happy and safe life. Her goal is to help people with epilepsy learn how to accept and love themselves. So I now introduce you to Stacy Chalemi. Hi, my name is Stacy Chalemi, and I am a health coach. Um, I had started this a very long time. Um, I had, um, at age of five, I had developed epilepsy, and I struggled all my life with this disorder. And as I got older, I had um, entered college, and as you know, it's a lot of uh, stress with uh, studying and doing uh, a lot of the um, responsibilities that comes along with uh, uh, college and I was having a very hard time I was struggling um, and having seizures and I had written a letter uh, to the Epilepsy Foundation and they have a magazine um, and I asked them to publish the magazine and I asked others with the disorder how they cope with epilepsy and surprisingly enough I received hundreds of letters from all over the United States and Canada from people that have a disorder and wanted to share their story and share what they do to try to cope and live with this disorder. Let me ask you at what age did all of this start? Not not the epilepsy but your feeling that you were maybe out of place and you didn't know really what to do at what age or how long ago was that? I think, you know, growing up as as a teenager, I think when you start to go through your hormonal stages and you start to really see others and you start to compare yourself and try to figure out who you are as a person, I you know, I think that's when it all had started. And I realized, and, you know, having seizures in front of people and, and trying to be, you know, just like everybody else, um, I think it really started as a teenager. But it wasn't until... I got to college and I had actually written that letter in that magazine and I got the feedback from everybody else that I realized that, hey, I'm not the only one and there is, there is a way to get around this. And that's when I started to, um, I had written a, uh, a book on epilepsy, but at that point in college, what I did was is I took a lot of the feedback that I got and I applied it to my own life. And then I had started working in the city when I graduated um, with a big corporation um, and they had one of the the big uh, producers had seen me have a seizure and uh, he had actually stepped over me and kept walking and uh, and 30 minutes later I was actually released from my job and oh, I had 
Yeah, you know, it was crazy. And, you know, so right then and there, I didn't let it get me down. I had actually, you know, spoken to some people who I know um, in the health industry, and they actually um, asked me to come to Washington, D.C., and I spoke in front of Congress, and I spoke about job discrimination, and I spoke about um, my epilepsy. And I remember Rush Holt, he was a politician, and he had uh, he had a sister, actually, that had epilepsy. And I remember looking at him, he was in the front row, and he actually took out a hand handkerchief and started um, wiping the tears away. And uh, he had um, uh, walked over to me after the uh, speech that I gave, and he shook my hand and he said, you know, your your speech brought back a lot of memories. Uh, my sister had it. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, at that point, I, I realized that, you know, I wasn't alone. And, you know, and it not just affects the person that has a disorder, but it affects the people around you, the people who love you, your caregivers. It's a, you know, when someone has any type of condition or disorder or disease, it affects everyone, everyone around them, including that person. And so then as time went on, um, I had written a uh little blog in the blogger on Google and I had um, I had actually uh, 400 followers and then <laughs> I decided uh, to to create my own blog and I had created my own blog and I uh, and actually it went from 400 to 10,000 followers and I realized that there were a lot of people interested in um, in about about uh, healing themselves naturally because that's what the blog was about I had uh, spoke to, um, I was writing for an herbalist, and I was doing a lot of research on on healing and a lot of research on uh, how to heal the body naturally. And uh, I was actually, I I found out so much interest in information, I started applying that information to my own life. And I went from having nine seizures a month to six to five to four to three. And I realized that, you know, there, there is, you know, healing the, you know, it's not just about popping a pill in life. It's about, you know, taking care of your body. You what? know, 90 percent. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Really quick. Do you still have that blog? And if so, what is its name? Um, I have, I had reconstructed the blog. Um, the blog is called the complete herbal com, And today we have 200,000 monthly visitors at our blog, believe it or not. That's wonderful. You mentioned in your bio that you sent me a spiritual awakening. What exactly do you mean by that? You know, there's a a time in your life when you actually realize that um, you know, there is more, more to life. You know, you have to be in sync with yourself, mind, body, and uh, soul. And if you're not in sync with yourself, um, you're not going to be able to actually function at, at full force. Um, I really believe that you really have to um, have a clear focus on yourself the world around you, and you really have to take care of yourself. And it all comes in sync. Uh, Feeding yourself the right food, exercising, um, you know, really uh, understanding yourself. I'm a big, big believer in yoga and meditation and just, you know, and and, uh, relaxing the mind because we always have to refuel ourselves as well. You know, the body, the body is not a machine. We have to really, you know, care for our body, care for our mind. And that's how we keep our, our everything strong. And, you know, by taking care of your mind, body and soul and and, you know, you could really see a huge improvement in your life, in, in, your, uh, in your health, and uh, many other things. We have a lot of listeners from different backgrounds, different stages of life. And you mentioned to me one thing that probably a lot of people are going through. You mentioned a few that were really eating you up beside your epilepsy. You mentioned a dysfunctional family, low self-esteem, a feeling of loss, not knowing where mm-hmm. I wanted to go. This is really heavy. Did, did you find that the spiritual awakening has taken over and above or thrown these things out? How would you say these things got tossed away? 
You know, it's um, over over 70% of people in the United States alone come from a dysfunctional family. And it's very hard when you live in a dysfunctional family to to uh, actually get the the um the 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 care and the and the and the certain things that you may need, especially when you're a child growing up. And believe it or not, your childhood affects your your adulthood. And you know, you'll talk to people and they'll go back and they'll revert back to their childhood and you'll see certain things they say and do and you know, and it all reverts back to their childhood, the way they grew up, things that they encountered, obstacles that came into their lives. These things have a huge impact and they follow us through our adult life and um, you really you know as you grow up in, in life and, and you you really have to you know a lot of times people have low self-esteem you know I had low self-esteem for a long time and I really had to find myself and I had to learn accept myself for who I am love myself for for who I am, and I had to, you know, move on with my life and, you know, set goals, long-term goals, short-term goals, and, and just, you know, and decide who do I want to be in life, where do I want to be in the next five or ten years, and I, I set up a plan for myself, you know, and I and I moved forward in my life, and I am, this day, I'm a very confident individual, I really, you know, I feel for others, I've helped a lot of people throughout my life, and I belong to a lot of different organizations organizations and I, I reach out to help others and you know, it's a great feeling when you can help somebody else and you know I at this time stage in my life I'm a very confident individual I am a very loving and caring individual and I try to do as much as I can to help the people around me and to you know do whatever I can to make the world a better place you mentioned that you have thousands and thousands of visitors to your website Mm -hmm. What is the factor, do you think, that has most contributed to your success as a blogger and an author? I think it's my love for what I do. I think when you know when you truly love what you do and you have a passion for what you do, you put your all into it. You put your three hundred percent in, and you know, and it shows. And you know, and when you speak to people and when you do lectures and when you help others, you know, people could see that. You know, um, you know when you know people can see when you truly believe in, in what you do and when you truly love something that you you want to do. It shows. It shows in your action. It shows in your words. It shows in your body language. And, you know, I think people see how much I really care and how much I want to help others. And people, you know, there are many people like me who, who want to feel better, who want to, you know, be able to, you know, um, be able to feel better, be able to think better, to be able to, you know, improve their lives in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, and these are the people who are, are trying to find answers. And, you know, and this is, this is, uh, basically why so many people have an interest in the complete herbal guide is because it ha it talks about everything from mind, body, and soul to exercise, health, you know, and it, it, it covers all different tracks. And uh, people are, you know, looking for answers and they find them. You talked to me about natural healing. Mm -hmm. What is, exactly is natural healing? I have all kinds of issues. I'm an older man. And mm -hmm. I've got a lot of issues, and a, a couple of them have, I've solved in the last few months, interestingly, naturally, with probiotics. Mm -hmm. Is probiotics a natural item, and what are others that you can suggest? Well, I, I actually take a probiotic every night, and <laughs> <Me too. laughs> uh, I'm a big believer in it, yeah. Um, you know, my allergy, I used to have terrible allergies, and when I started taking probiotics, my allergies, you know, went away. Um, you know, probiotics can help lots of different things, and it's, it's great. Um, it's great if you have digestive problems. It's great for the gut, um, you know, and it, and it helps a lot of issues. And, um, you know... Uh, Healing, healing yourself, um, you know, some, you know, sometimes we do need medication. I still take medication for my epilepsy, but it's, you know, my medic, I, I did not do as well until I started taking care of my body and started, you know, and started to, you know, work on, on lots of different things. I worked on how I handle stress in life. I worked on, you know, getting enough of sleep because sleep is a big factor too. People, you know, people have had, 
many, many health issues related to a lack of sleep and, and sleep depression. And, and, you know, um, you know, I had done some work for Ariana Huffington and, you know, she, she wrote a book a couple of years back about, you know, uh, sleep deprivation and, and, you know, and how it affected her life, how it almost killed her. Because she just, you know, she was on the go, constantly doing, you know, what she loved. But she had a, she didn't get enough of sleep. She didn't get enough of rest, and and it almost, it almost, um, you know, hurt her tremendously, health wise. What has been, in your mind, your biz, biggest success since you started writing and since you've had your blog? One particular person or item or what have you. Well, I remember receiving a, an email from somebody, and they said they were on the uh, brink of wanting to commit suicide. They just didn't see a reason to live anymore. They had epilepsy, and they, um, you know, they got their license taken away from them. They weren't able to work anymore because they were constantly having seizures. Um, they, you know, they felt trapped in in a, in a, a world that um, didn't make them happy anymore. Uh, they didn't, you know, she didn't know what her next step in life was going to be, and she said that she went in the bookstore and she saw my one book, um, Epilepsy, You're Not Alone, and she read that book, and, and that book had a lot of different um, tips and tools and strategies on how to cope with a disorder and move on with your life, and she said she applied those things to her life, and she did a total turnaround, and she saw a purpose in life, and she saw a reason to want to live, and she moved forward in life, and she said that book helped her, helped her um, find purpose in life, and it, and it saved her life. And when I, when I received that email, I actually realized at that point in my life that, you know, um, how powerful words could be and how much impact they could have on a person's life. And that's, I think, when I really, truly um, felt such, an, such a, a great feeling that I was able to help somebody and realize how powerful you know, words or, you know, a video or anything could be, how it can impact someone's life and change someone's life for the better. You know, listening to you talk, it sounds like nothing today can possibly go wrong. Tell, <laughs> tell me how often, if you do, or tell me about a time lately that you've really lost it and screwed up. I lost that. You know, my my life is like a roller coaster. We have our ups and downs. You know, I don't think anybody could say particularly that their life is perfect. Perfection to me is in not in the in not a true word. You know, it might be in the dictionary, but it's not realistic. You know, there is no such thing as perfection. You know, we, you know, in life we we learn from our mistakes, and if you are one to learn from your mistakes, then you will succeed in life because, you know. Um, you know, life has its ups and downs, and when we have our ups and downs, we have to realize that, you know, problems can be solved and not let, not let it get the best of us. And, uh, you know, um, when, when problems do occur, I try to take a step back. I try to look at the situation, you know, if I've made a mistake or if it's just not a, a good situation in general, I try to, you know, learn from it and then try to figure out a solution, the best solution possible. And then, you know, I'm always one to listen to others. You know, I keep an open mind because I believe, you know, there's so many people out there that have gone through similar situations in life, whatever it may be. And, you know, the best thing to do, if someone has succeeded, you know, to, to listen to them. Consider your most significant career accomplishment to date. Um, I really uh, felt really great about, um, one, my website has been uh, a true accomplishment because I've, I've helped so many people through it, you know. Um, I, you know, that was, uh, you know, it started from scratch and, you know, I built it up to where it is today and, and, and that's a great feeling. Working for different um, different companies and advisory boards at, from a patient perspective has been a great accomplishment. I love the fact that you know I've um, been on I've been asked to be on a lot of different boards to help people to give my 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 um, my point of view um, because they value what I have to say and then applying those things and creating different different things in the uh, health field to help others based on, you know, some of the things that I, I have suggested from my own experience in life. Um, so, you know, uh, you know be, get, get into a point where people actually know who you are and value what you have to say is a great feeling. And knowing that what, they're taking what you say and putting it 
to usage and creating things to make other people's lives better is a, a great feeling as well. We just met you. What would you say in two or three words that you do or is your profession or your work? When somebody says, what do you do, how do you answer it? I would say that I'm a health coach, um, author, and, uh, you know, I, I think that's, you know, a pretty, pretty much, you know, and uh, pretty much it. I like to, I help people, you know, based on health, and I've written over twenty books, you know, oh, based wonderful. on a lot of different things that you know. And I've even written books about you know positive thinking because I do believe when you go through life that the key, the key to overcoming it, things in life is, is learning how to be positive, learning uh, focus on the positive and, and throw back the negative. A few real quickies, up close and personal, as they say on TV. How do you how do you relax when you're not working? When I'm not working, I try to. Um, I like to do a little meditation. I like to do yoga. I like to do things that I enjoy. I love going outside. I really love focusing on nature. Um, you know, things that are very relaxing to me. I love, you know, going. You know, I live in Jersey, so I love going by the. Uh, by the beaches, you know, looking at the ocean, hearing the waves, you know, things that are serene, that bring, you know, peace and serenity into my life. You know, I like to do things like that. You know, it helps to, you know, relax the mind and the body. And uh, it's just a, a great feeling overall. What is your favorite way to work out, even if it's only a minute a day? <laughs> Um, I love walking. I think walking is great. Um, I love to, you know, I, I think, you know, if people can't get to the gym or they can't, you know, or they're, you know, they can only exercise a little bit, I think stretching and, and walking is a, is a great, um, uh, tool for fitness. Uh, if you were to get a tattoo tomorrow, what would it be? I think I would do an angel. I think, uh, you know, I'm a big uh, believer in angels and, and spirits watching over us. And I think we all have people up in the heavens watching over us and protecting us. So, you know, um, I think if they, if, uh, if I had to get a tattoo and they'd ask me what, what would you want, I would probably um, uh, get a, a, a description, of, a picture of a beautiful angel and put it on me. What turns you on and what turns you off? Um, negative people definitely turn me off. I, you know, I hate when people are always focusing more on the negative and they have nothing good to say. Um, I love positive people. Um, you know, positive people turn me on because they have such great positive energy. And, you know, when you're in a room with people who are positive and happy, it rubs off on you. You could be anywhere. And if you, if you meet somebody and they're positive and happy and energetic, you'll notice while you're talking to them, you feel that same energy because it just reverts back to you. So it's, uh, you know, those are the two things. What's your favorite breakfast? I love eggs. I always eat eggs in the morning, and I actually I'm a, I'm a big one for eggs and spinach. I do I do oh. two eggs and spinach. I'm a little bit you know I do that all the time. That's that's one of my favorites. I have scrambled eggs and jelly, and my wife thinks I'm crazy. I, I, I love to eat it that way. What is your favorite ice cream? Vanilla ice cream is my Vanilla. favorite. You know. I've had a great time. I hope you've enjoyed this also. I and, have. And I hope our listeners are enjoying this. So a little bit of business. How can our listeners get in touch with you either by text or phone or email? Tell us about your blog. Give us the address. Whatever is important for us to get back in touch with you, please let us know. What are those things? If you have any questions and you'd love to email me, you can email me at editor at thecompleteherbalguide.com. Uh, I'll answer your emails. I'd love to help. And I'm also, we have a Facebook page, too. Um, we're on Twitter, and we're at The Herbal Guide. And uh, we're also on Pinterest. Um, you can get us on thecompleteherbalguide.com. There is a contact page as well. And you can just go right to the contact page and, you know, and ask any questions or give, leave any comments or feedback, and we'll get that and we'll respond to you as well. And we also have uh, different um, books that I've written that are on the Complete Herbal Guide. And
And I also have my website, stacychalemi.com. You can go there as well. But if you're looking to try to improve your health and get great, get great health advice, we have everything from from uh, recipes to uh, health and fitness, uh, different um, we have everything about yoga, meditation. Uh, we have every condition under the sun. If you have a question about a specific condition, just type it in. It'll take you right to all the articles, and it'll give you lots of great, helpful advice on different natural ways and helpful ways to um, tweak yourself, improve, and you know, and give you great advice that you might want to consider to, to help you and your your body and and your mind. Are your books and writings on Amazon? They can go right to, to Amazon or Barnes & Nobles or to StacyChalemi.com. They're really great understanding about all these different things and, you know, and different herbs. And I have to one, say one thing before we leave is that people have to realize, too, that herbal supplements are just as strong as medications. And if you're taking medications, you have to be cautious and make sure because a lot of times um, you could take a medication and then you take a herbal supplement and they can interact. So you have to be really cautious. You may want to ask your doctor if you can take it because a lot of times depression medication, heart medication, cholesterol medication, these are, you know, even epilepsy medication, these are some types of different medications that actually could have interactions. And a lot of times when they make medications, the, the pharmaceutical companies, they actually use herbal supplements in some of their medications. So it tells you how strong they are. So, you know, you have to just make sure you, you know what you're taking before you take it and make sure you can actually take it. Thanks for listening to Our Town Live. And don't forget to subscribe and give us a review. 